Um, you thought being an influencer meant that you had to be naturally photogenic? Let me be the first to tell you. That's a lie. And I'm about to tell you how to get the biggest influencer dupe for yourself. Let's get it. Hi loves! Welcome and welcome back to my channel! Who is this blondie? And by blondie I mean wiggy because you're growing up bleaching your hair. If you are new here, hi, my name is Carrie. I make girly glam and slightly ratchet, but quality content here online. And I thought, what would be a better way than to start this year off giving the tea and being a little bit more vulnerable when it comes to content creation? Being a content creator is something that has just grown in popularity. Now, one of the basic things in order to get started on your content creation influencer journey is taking some really great photos and I have a secret to tell and that's that your girl is not naturally photogenic. I literally am not. So if you feel like you're a little bit shy but you want to step out of your comfort zone this year and you just don't know where to start, I'm going to tell you how to be an influencer doopy and how to take photos even when you're not naturally photogenic. So if you're interested in learning my tips and tricks for taking some really great photos for the gram, then it just keep watching. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel as well as turn on the post notification bell so that way you never miss my upload a new video. I will be uploading two times a week this year. And feel free to follow me on my socials at Glamanista08 across all channels that way you can stay tuned and see all the other girly glam and slightly ratchet parts of my life behind the scenes. But with all that being said, we're gonna get right into today's video. Okay, like I said, I'm not naturally photogenic, and I'm not even trying to like bash myself, compliment that. I'm literally being so honest. I am so unnaturally photogenic that in high school, my friends created a group chat specifically to share their photos of me that they deemed meme pictures because your girl is just, Candace can't happen with Carrie, okay? It's just, it's, I'm not blessed. I've had to learn how to take a really good photo and it's still not something that's natural to me. So the tips and tricks I'm gonna give you are specifically for if you're not naturally photogenic, if you're looking to kind of swindle catfish, if you will. More importantly, these are things that I use when I take photos and a lot of these things have been self-taught. All of my advice today is gonna be like outfit photos, fashion photos, selfies, that type of thing. Tip number one is super basic. It's taking us back to our ANTM days minus the problematic tendencies. That's finding your angles and finding your light. It's super important to kind of play around with the angles. And if you're someone who's not naturally photogenic like me, you might not know what that is. So what I would recommend is if you are planning on doing like a 2024 photo shoot or you're really trying to go ham with your content, Go through some of the photos that you already have of yourself, even if they've been candid, if they've been planned, whatever, and pick out the photos that you like the best about yourself and see if you can find any similarities. For me, my right side is almost always gonna be shown to you guys because my right side is my more structured side of my face. My left side is giving Cabbage Patch Kitty. She's a little rounder. She's so cute. We'll be on till this on this side, okay? Same thing with body language. When you look at your favorite influencers, you might notice as you scroll through their feed that they have similar poses, even if they switch it up here and there. Once you find your signature, don't shy away from it. You don't have to take every single photo the exact same way, but try to find a few angles for your body and for your face that work for you that are kind of your go-tos, so you never really have to think too much, and you know you'll at least get a couple of photos that you that flows into tip number two, which is to embrace movement. Another ANTM tip that I really do like is that you should constantly be moving when you take photos. And I know some people like really try to flow with the photos and that's all cool and dandy. But for me, I do take little breaks, but I just try to create little tweaks, whether it be tilting my head in different directions but keeping my body the same, slowly moving my hair in a photo, moving different limbs, moving your body angles, but doing it in small increments so that way I can get little tiny different versions of the same photo to choose from. Tip number three is to practice your facial expressions as well. If you are not naturally photogenic, this will get you. I can't tell you how many times I've taken a photo and I really like my body's posing, my position, and I'm really focused on either like trying to highlight a certain item I'm wearing or making sure I look my best, but my face is giving dumb, okay? <laughs> so make sure that you practice different facial expressions as well. I love to kind of give a range of emotions from closed mouth smile to a happy smile to maybe a little bit of a laugh, catalogy to more straight-faced, serious fashion. Play around, have fun. 
Tip number four is to relax, okay? Especially if you're taking photos in public or with someone taking your photos and you're used to taking them by yourself, it can be really intimidating. But just be yourself, be natural, and when in doubt, even though we're not naturally photogenic, go for the candid. Literally, if you are like, I cannot find a good angle, I cannot figure this out, have someone take photos of you while you're doing an activity. Like while you're actively drinking coffee instead of posing with your coffee, or while you're actively reading something or doing something that relates to your aesthetic. So that way you can hopefully find something, but it allows for you to relax in the process. Okay, tip number five is a quick tip. Good lighting, it matters. I am still someone who tries to take shortcuts every now and then, but it does not pay off. If you don't have good lighting, invest in a really great ring light. Amazon has some really good affordable options now. And of course, you can always use the free option of the sun, but it will save you time when you take photos with good lighting because there's so much less editing you have to do and you'll thank yourself later. The next tip is a little bit similar to the angles tip, but it's just to experiment with posing and be a little bit free with this. Sometimes the best poses that I've gotten or some of my favorite photos are poses that I never would have thought to naturally do. And I was just kind of like, let's just see where this goes. Let's just see where the world takes us. So have fun. Even if you feel awkward, look awkward, just do it and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, you can just trash it with the other photos. But if it does work out, you got a new pose, you got a new angle in your arsenal. And again, sometimes a good outfit calls for a really weird high fashion pose. Channel your inner Forever 21 mannequin. The next tip is about what you're actually wearing in your photos. No matter your aesthetic, one of my favorite things to do is to make sure that I am fitting my aesthetic and fashionable, but also comfortable. So for example, the outfit that I'm wearing today that I did for taking these photos, I had a really short mini skirt. The booty was breezing, okay? But instead of wearing something that was also gonna make me feel a little insecure or uncomfortable on the top, I wore this oversized, really cozy sweater. I like to kind of mix comfort with a little bit of high fashion, so that way I don't have to feel as shy when I'm taking photos. Sometimes it's not that you're naturally unphotogenic, it might just be that you're trying to wear something that looks cute, but it's not totally comfortable. Let's talk about camera settings and camera use. For me, most of my Instagram photos, almost all of them will be taken via iPhone. Whatever phone you have, make sure that you clean the lens of your camera. Whenever possible, take photos from your back camera instead of your front camera. In fact, when it comes to taking photos on the front camera, I like to use an app called Lens Buddy because it, it makes it so much easier to change the settings to keep taking back-to-back -back photos um, at the angle, at the speed in which you're comfortable with so you don't have to be going back and forth and it allows for you to use a tripod when taking photos. But if you also want to be a camera Instagram baddie girly, you can get a digital camera and take your photos on there. And I usually have a tripod that allows for my camera to be vertical even if it means lifting it sideways so that they are Instagram friendly. I think Carrie is here, oh my gosh. The one thing that I would also add to this piece of advice is that I do think while you should take photos with your back camera to have like the best quality on your phone, it is difficult when you're naturally unphotogenic like me to actually know what's going on or know how things are going to turn out. So the trick I have for that is to either do the Lens Buddy app, take it with your front camera, just kind of nix a little bit of the quality in order to see yourself, or if you're having someone else take your photos, um, usually it's my boyfriend Sam, what I'll do is I'll have him have my phone and then his phone will be like below the camera. So he's holding two phones like this while he's taking photos and his phone is on the front facing camera with the front of his phone facing me. So it's almost like a little bit of a mirror so I can kind of see and get my best angles while he's taking the photos. So. I just wanted to jump in here and add that tip because it's been really, really useful. And if you're not taking this photo with someone else, let's say you're at home, whenever you're at home possible, you can always do the same thing, but instead just have a mirror on the other side of your front of your camera so that way you can see the reflection of what your poses are looking like while using the quality of the back camera. Hopefully this makes sense. Peace out. Okay, she's going a little rough on her editing day, but we were supposed to be in this video eventually, so here we go. This is another basic tip. Take a whole bunch of shots, okay? Nobody's out here taking three photos and calling it a day. And if you think that's why you're considered unphotogenic, you just aren't taking enough photos, okay? Take a whole bunch. If you do not like the photos, listen to me, okay? This is for future Carrie as well. If you do not like the photos, take more. It's okay. It's okay to ask to take more. It's okay to take a little bit longer than you planned if you're really going for quality content. And that's something that I'm trying to prioritize because I've not done that in the past. I've always rushed through photos, tried to get the lazy girl era 
photo finish and it ended up being photos that I didn't like and I didn't love and I didn't look forward to posting and I was just posting for the sake of posting. So take a whole bunch, take your time and enjoy every second of it. Next, you always can rely on a little bit of editing magic to get your photos from five to a ten. For me, my favorite two editing apps are the two that I'm showing you on the screen. One is called Beauty Plus. I actually really, really love this app because there are so many different features, but the ones that I use the most are the makeup feature actually, because I tend to feel like my lashes don't show up fully on my photos, so I like to enhance that. Sometimes I'll enhance the blush, but I like it because instead of it changing the way your face looks, it kind of just emphasizes the colors on your face a little bit more so that they show up in your pictures. So I really, really like that. You can also do a little bit of face tuning and whatnot, but I don't really touch on that too much. There is a smooth feature that I like to add a little bit of a glamour glow to my photos. Um, and I also really like the blur tool because it blurs your background. So if you ever have a background and it's giving a little too much chaos, you can blur it lightly and give it a little bit of a softer ethereal finish. So I'll use that app to kind of like enhance my makeup a little bit and then I love Snapseed specifically because of the speed at which you can edit your photos with this. Snapseed, you also have a lot of different options, um, but what I like to do is fine tune my photo lighting in Snapseed, so I usually play around with things like brightness and clarity. I also add a little bit of a pink hue to my photos, but I do it manually instead of using a filter so that way I can control it based off of what the photo looked like to begin with. And then I love to add a little bit of a brightness around like a vignette, but I do it brighter than darker. So again, it gives my aesthetic. My favorite thing about this app is let's say you're doing a carousel post, you have like 10 photos and you want them to all look the same. Once you edit those specific changes on one photo, it will save your last edits. So then I literally just insert my next photo, press one button one time, and then it makes those same edits. So I love Snapseed for that so much. It also does have a cool tool. It's called Healing, so it's not necessarily supposed to be for all erasing, but I'll show you my New Year's photos. I didn't have a full drape on the background of my photos, so I just healed it and it kind of blended it. I'm gonna rapid fire my last tip so this video won't be too long. Definitely work on your confidence. Always practice self-love. Give yourself a little bit of affirmations before you take photos because it can be a little bit daunting when you take photos and you feel like you're not getting the photo that you want and you can be hard on yourself or your appearance, but I promise you, you are beautiful and the camera will never be able to fully capture that. And if you think it's really hard to keep your confidence and your mood up while taking photos, listen to music. Sometimes I love having like a whole little photo shoot vibe with the right track on the background to really get me dancing when I take photos. And having fun and not really feeling like it's a chore, but feeling like it's a fun hobby, a fun little task that we're doing. If you are in doubt, you don't know how to pose, you're really overwhelmed, definitely use inspiration photos. I see photos all the time on Instagram and Pinterest of things that I would want to do or photo shoot ideas that I'd like to try. And I like this not only for myself to reference like different poses I can try, but also if I'm having Sam take my photos, I can kind of show him what the inspo is so he gets a good idea of what I'm trying or envisioning in my head. And finally, practice makes perfect. You are not going to get the perfect photo, the perfect photo shoot, have everything figured out unless you do it. So stop waiting for the perfect moment. Stop making excuses of not having the perfect amount of equipment or the right hair or the right amount of clothes. Just do it. Those were all my tips on how to hack the influencer lifestyle, be an influencer dupe, and take some photos even if you feel like you're naturally unphotogenic. Any photo that you've seen of me in the past, I promise you it has taken these tips to help me get from that to the gram because otherwise my candids are not that cute. And it's okay, I'm sharing my catfish tips just in case you're like me. <laughs> Again, make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you want more tips like this. And if you do want specific content creator tips, let me know in the comments. I used to make videos like this all the time about creator tips, but it was specifically about YouTube. Um, so let me know if you're curious about anything that you want me to cover. And feel free to follow me on socials at Glimanista08. But otherwise, I will let you get on with your days. Have a fun photo shoot, your first photo shoot for 2024. I know you're going to kill it. And if you decide to take photos after watching this video, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to follow you and support your photo journey. With all that being said, I will see you guys next time. Bye loves.